The Crisis in China, 1945 to 1950. The critical year, 1949, which showed so clearly that the Kremlin's influence in Europe was severely limited within the area of control of the Soviet armies, saw also a shift of Stalin's activity to the Far East, where he tried new tactics in, these, in new circumstances. In Europe, outside the area of the Soviet military occupation, even in West Berlin, Stalin had met a series of defeats in Austria, Germany, Yugoslavia, Greece, Turkey, Iran, and even Finland. In the Far East, where there was no extensive area of Soviet military control, different tactics were both necessary and possible. There also, Stalin was largely defeated, also, although it, it took many years to demonstrate this fact. His defeat arose from his failure to recognize the commun that communism could advance in backward areas only so long as it was anti-colonial rather than communist and worked to further local interests rather than those of Moscow. Stalin did not recognize these truths, and Soviet success in adopting tactics based on them was largely reserved for his successors after 1953. At first glance, the communist success in injecting the nationalist government of Chiang Kai-shek from China does not seem to support these remarks. But it must be recognized that the communist victory in China was not a victory for Stalin and was not regarded as one by Stalin himself. In fact, the victory of Mao Zedong in China was not encouraged, expected, or notably assisted by Moscow. Stalin was like a shrewd old wolf with the North Siberian forest. Of the North Siberian forest, uh, understanding nothing outside his own experience, he never got, forgot what, what had happened to himself. Stalin had been involved once before in 1927 in an effort to communize China and had failed disastrously in the attempt. Now, in the wake of World War II, he had no desire to repeat that fiasco. What he wanted in the Far East is not clear, but it seems evident that he wanted a weak China surrounded by small states in which American influence was minimal. Such a weak China could be guaranteed by a con continued rule under the nationalist government, possibly with the communists playing a role in a coalition, as the U.S. seemed to wish. Uh, through such a weak and divided China, Stalin could anticipate no threat to himself either from American efforts or from China itself to reduce the danger of either of these alternatives. Stalin would have welcomed communist, communist or largely communist uh, regimes in uh, Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia, and Indonesia with an autonomous or independent communist Chinese regime in control of northwestern China, and possibly even Manchuria, as a buffer to the Soviet Union's own territory. At the end of the war in the Far East in 1945, it was clear to most observers that Roosevelt pre Roosevelt's pretense that nationalist China was a great power, like his equally confused pretense that France was not a significant power, was mistaken. China's war effort, again, uh, against Japan weakened fairly steadily from Pearl Harbor to the end. This decline result, resulted uh, very largely from the almost total corruption of the regime, which left Chinese peasant the Chinese peasant in sullen discontent and roused open disfavor among many urban groups, notably students. Many portions of the huge area of China were only nominally subjected to Chiang Kai-shek's rule, and very consider, and a very, very considerable extent in the western and northwestern uh, far interior were subjected to the communist regime of Mao Zedong in Chao and Lai operating out of Yan'an in barren north, northern uh, Shenzi province. Chiang Kai-shek was a man of considerable ability and experience and may not himself, himself have been involved in the corruption of his regime, but he was deeply involved personally with cliques and gangs of persons who chiefs, whose chief aims were, were to profit from their public positions and from their close associations with Chiang and to resist, by any means, efforts to reform or strengthen China, which might reduce their opportunities for corruption. These relationships in 1945, in some cases, had continued for almost 20 years. American aid and the contributions of the Chinese themselves disappeared in the network of corrupt and mutually beneficial relationships which were spread throughout the system and which made it impossible for Shang for the Shang regime to provide a decent living for the people of China or even to defend itself against possible enemies, internal or external. <clears throat> Arms and supplies from abroad were dissipated, vanished, vanishing in one way or another, sometimes forever, 
but on other occasions they turned up subsequently in the hands of guerrillas or of the communist enemies of Ch Shang's regime. An enormous and incompetent army drained from the peasants at low prices large requisitions which were sold, usually for profit, at the highest prices into urban black markets. In the two years following the defeat of Japan, 1,432 million in American assistance to China vanished in one way or another. And at the end of the Chinese, and at the end, the Chinese in the in the Shang regime was, was weaker than ever. In spite of this weakness and waste. The nationalist government refused to obey American advice either to reform or simply to consolidate itself in the parts of China it still controlled. It was determined to destroy the communist regime, especially when Mao began to take steps to consolidate the buffer area which he and Stalin wished to establish in northwestern and northern China. This determination became a panic to prevent the Russian forces in Manchuria from returning over uh, that rich area to the communist units. The Soviet forces there, after loading the area under the guise of reparations from Japan, began to withdraw early in 1946. <clears throat> By a simple process of inform informing Mao and not informing Shang of their withdrawal schedules, they ensured that the abandoned areas should be occupied immediately by communist forces. The U.S., which had been engaged in evacuating 3 million Japanese from China, moved 14 nationalist Chinese armies most of which had been trained and equipped by the U.S. to northern China and Manchuria to block the communist takeover. After the defeat of communist forces in the north, however, the nationalists, uh, contrary to American advice, attempted to crush the communist forces everywhere. They did succeed in capturing the communist capital of Yan'an in March of 1947, but as the effort continued, their own forces were dispersed and defeated. While the Chinese forces, supported by disgruntled peasants, took over much of rural China. General Marshall, on a mission from President Truman, spent much of 1946 in China. At first, he hoped to work out some kind of coalition regime which would stop the civilian war by taking communists into the Shang government in a minority role. Because this was not acceptable to either side, Marshall, and later in 1947, General Wedemeyer, tried to get Shang to reform and consolidate in the areas he still controlled. Promises were free, but efforts to carry them out were insignificant. In an attempt to force the nationalist government to stop the civil war and carry out the American program of reform, consolidation, and coalition with the communists, an American embargo on arms shipments to China existed for 11 months, from August 1946 to July 1947. Unfortunately, this was just the period in which the communists were expanding their forces with captured Japanese arms obtained from the Russians and with large acquisition of their earlier American arms shipments to the nationalists, which were corruptly, corruptly allowed to go to the Reds. To stop this and to stop the wastage of nationalist troops by incompetent leadership, it would have been necessary to allot at least 10,000 American officers to Shang's forces, attached to every unit down to company level. Neither side wanted to do this, as the problem of language translation, of inability to enforce recommendations, or to overcome personal Chinese resentment against such interference by foreigners were almost insuperable. Marshall, in 1946, began, <clears throat> became convinced that the nationalist regime was hopeless and that it could overcome the communists only if the United States uh, took actual control by American personnel and fought the communists with American troops. He was unwilling to do this because he felt that the Chinese would resent it themselves and it would make it impossible any American effort to save Europe from the direct Soviet control. Since there could be no question that Europe was more significant by an immense margin, he made the choice, represented by Marshall Pla the Marshall Plan, to save Europe. He did not regard the Chinese position as total loss because he was convinced that any Chinese regime, nationalist or communist, would find it almost impossible to create a strong and pro uh, prosperous China. China. General Wedemeyer, who re whose report was submitted to Washington in 1949, agreed with General Marshall about the corruption and incompetence of the Shang regime and the hopeless state of its future prospects, but felt that large American aid and control should be extended as a method of delaying the communist advance. However, Wedemeyer, unlike Marshall, gave less consideration either to Europe or to political possibilities in Washington.
the policy adopted in the Truman administration was something of a compromise between the Marshall and the Wedemeyer recommend recommendations. On the whole, the administration secretly adjusted its outlook to the hopelessness of the Shang regime and its future, but it did not continue assistance by appropriating $400 million in Chinese aid in 1948. The inability of the Zhang government to take to make any substantial use of such aid continued to be revealed in 1947 through 49. The printing of paper money for the government's expenses continued until the Chinese paper dollar became almost valueless. In August 1948, a new yuan currency replaced the previous Chinese dollar at a rate of one yuan to three million, but the new money was decreased in value by deflation as the old had been. The abuse of the Chinese people continued under guise of a general mobilization against the communists, and the war efforts against the latter were used as a cover for terroristic elimination of any groups who showed less than wholehearted support of the Shang regime and its corrupt procedures. Regardless of how anti-communist such, uh, anti such groups might be, American military advice and training was continually disregarded and ignored, and the best troops being thrown piecemeal under incompetent and corrupt generals against communist forces. In this way, 300,000 men, including the best of the American trained divisions, were wasted in Manchuria in North, in North China in September to November 1948. On November 6th, American military... Uh, the American military mission decided unanimously that the situation could not sa be saved without the use of American ground forces and that no amount of military assistance would save the present situation. At mid-January 1949, the main field armies north of the Yangtze were destroyed by communist forces. By that time, Mao's success was, were going, uh, far, successes were going far beyond the limits expected or hoped for by Stalin, but the latter's efforts to slow up the communist advances were disregarded. Soviet agents of the, from uh, Central Asia took over Xinjiang province, but in China itself, Mao's advance was quite independent of Russian control. Since it could be financed from Chinese areas already controlled and could be fought with weapons captured from national forces to add to the captured Japanese weapons obtained from Soviet sources earlier. The communist uh, victories were carried to conclusion in 1949. In January, Peiping was captured from the Nationalists, and three months later, the Yangtze River was crossed, and Nanking fell April 23rd. In the course of the summer, all the South fell, and the Nationalist government, eight years to the day after Pearl Harbor, fled from the mainland to Taiwan, Formosa, where they were protected from communist pursuit by the United States 7th Fleet. In December 1949, Mao Zedong and Stalin met in Moscow for their first and last meeting. These led to a mutual assistance treaty signed on February 14, 1950. By this agreement, Mao sought economic and technical assistance, which he needed to build up China, while, Stil while Stalin sought to use these needs to turn China's unexpected developments in directions he desired. Most of the agreements remained secret, but the chief, in but the chief included a defensive military alliance, uh, detailed agreements by which most of the railways and ports controlled by the Russians in the north would be turned over to the Red Chinese by the end of 1952. These included Port Arthur and a loan to China of $60 million a year for five years at 1% interest, much less in total than, the Ch than China had thought. Less tangible agreements left Outer Mongolia and Chinese Tenu Tuva in Soviet control set up a condominium in Xinjiang left North Korea in the area of Soviet control and turned China's expansionist ambitions southward. At the same time, a secret agreement may have been made to support the pro projected North Korean attack on South Korea as 50,000 Koreans and the Chinese Communist forces were weeded out and transferred to the North Korean army in the next five months. One consequence of the Sino-Soviet agreements of February 1950 was a mass influx of Soviet advisors and technicians into China to guide their allies in, the, in use of the new equipment and methods made possible by the Soviet loan. These rose to scores of thousands, of which about half were military. At the same time, about 6,000 Chinese students were admitted to university study in Russia. All this cooperated, cooperation ended in the shattering collapse of this alliance exactly 10 years after it was established, 1960.